Jacob got stung by a fuck ton of jellyfish. Yes, robots are gonna take over the world. <laughs> Made my recipe book, I was like, okay, in the beginning pages, I wanna actually talk about how to apply these recipes. Listen to me as I Welcome back to the Nitty Gritty Podcast. We are on episode nine already. So, uh, I just got Billy a new dog toy today. He really loves it, as you can hear. <laughs> he has the eyes as if... This is actually how one of my um, friends back in Iowa explained it. They said that Billy has eyes like a little kid who just had their lunch money stolen. <laughs> I'll put up a picture and you can verify if you agree with that statement or not. But he does. He just had those, he has those like big, not sad eyes, just like, like I was saying in the last podcast, it was going to be a busy couple of weeks and we're kind of toward the tail end of it. But we had Jacob's dad, he came down last Friday, uh, along with one of Jacob's friends. So Jacob's friend just stayed over the weekend, so he's already gone. He left on Monday. And then Jacob's dad is going to leave next Monday, so he's still here with us. But last weekend, they went on a deep sea fishing trip for Jacob's birthday, and it was... An interesting experience <laughs> from what he said. It was definitely not like the first fishing trip he went on, which I talked about that in my NPC women's workshop vlog. I put that towards the end. So if you want to see that, go watch the end of that video. But he said that this captain was a interesting guy. He didn't quite use those words. He used exactly the words of a uh, tweaker. <laughs> um, he said that he was just strange. He was talking to the fish. So they caught a shark and he was sitting there literally talking to the shark, asking if he could take the hook out of its mouth. Hi, Jacob, girl. Hi, Jacob, girl. Come here, girl. Hi. What are you doing today? Well, you all right? You good? No, no kicking, okay? You'll be good? Can I get a hook out for you? Huh? Can I do that? Can I be good? All right. This time it was on the, that would be, never E, that'd be the E side. The first time they went on a fishing charter, it was on the west side. So that would be like the Tampa side of Florida. And they said they liked that side a lot better, which, fun fact, if you go to the west side of Florida, the water's a lot more calm. Versus if you go to the east side, it's typically a lot choppier. So fishing charter wise, if you're going out on a boat in the ocean, you probably want the water that's gonna be the most smooth. I, I don't know if I've ever told this story before, but the very first time we went on a deep sea fishing charter. It was down in Mexico. And this was the first time Jacob ever did it either. And this was actually the first time that I even saw the ocean. We ended up booking this deep sea fishing trip. I didn't know what to expect. And it was so ungodly choppy. The waves were massive. We were on a small ass boat. It was myself, Jacob, and then some other random guy, which somehow ended up being from Iowa, which was so ironic because we were all the way down in Mexico and we just happened to find another Iowan. It's weird. I feel like that happens a lot. Like we'll just be out somewhere randomly and then we'll end up meeting someone and they're from Iowa too. I don't know if that is like, what do you call that? Not manifestation, but like good luck or whatever, but it happens a lot. So anyway, we're down in Mexico. We're on this boat with a stranger from Iowa and almost immediately I start feeling motion sickness. And I'm not the type of person that gets motion sickness either. Like this was the first time in my life I have ever felt this. And I <laughs> immediately am like, Jacob, 
can you tell the captain to turn around? I'm like, just drop me off. I'm like, I don't want to stop this trip. I don't want to like get sick in front of these people. I'm like, just tell the captain to turn around, drop me off and you guys can continue. And he's like, Nicole, I'm not telling the captain to turn around to drop you off. He's like, you're fine. He's like, just keep your eyes on land. And I'm like, no, 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 I have to look forward because we were obviously driving like away from land. And I'm like, well, I don't want to keep looking at land because then I'm looking backwards and I thought that was going to make it worse. But long story short, it didn't matter where the heck I looked. I ended up getting terribly seasick to the point where I thought I was going to pass out and like die. Like I'm not even exaggerating. Like it was bad. And I took Droxamine. I took Dramamine. I even tried like a sip of beer because for some reason the captain said that that was supposed to work. He was probably just bullshitting me and wanted me to drink beer. Um, But I ended up just like lying down on like one of the front seats and just passed out the whole entire time. I ended up reeling in some fish. So that was cool. But I am never going to go deep sea fishing again since I had that experience. (laughs) So now when Jacob goes on all these charters, he always wants me to go, but I just, I can't, I can't bring myself to do that again. Cause that was literally the time in my life where I felt the absolute worst. Like everybody has that moment where they're like, Oh yes, that was the point where I've been like the sickest in my whole entire life. For me, it was that day. So anyway, that's what they ended up doing. I wasn't able to go one because the story I just told, but then two, because there was a coaching convention going on. So, and that's just one thing I love about Orlando. Like there are so many freaking things going on and I love it because otherwise, like back when I lived in Iowa, If there was any big event going on, it was always in Chicago. So we would have to drive three, four hours to go to Chicago to do anything. And even then, like, there wasn't really anything there. Versus being in Orlando, it's just a prime spot where everybody wants to go. And so there's always going to be these big events going on. And I can drive 30 minutes and be there instead. So definitely a lot more convenient. But... It was this coaching convention, so it was nice to be around other coaches, you know, like-minded people, and there was a lot of seminars going on. So I, I love learning new stuff. I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to that. So I was listening to these seminars, and there was one person that was talking about health coaches and how it is revolutionizing because of AI. And this is one topic that freaks me out because AI is something that is so new, but some scary ass things can come from this. You are able to like make photos out of nothing. You're able to make books and texts and videos and voices out of nothing. So I am so (laughs) concerned about just like the next couple of years of what shit is going to come up because of AI. Like we're going to get to a certain point where we're not going to know what is real and what is fake. Because if you can just pull a video out of thin air, how are you supposed to know if it's legit or not? But I'm kind of going off topic. But anyway, I wanted to talk about this one thing that they mentioned. So they said one year ago, so in 2023, Tesla made their first robot and they were doing this huge seminar with it. They had a room full of people wanting to watch this robot that they just created. And then when it came time, the robot was stumbling on stage and it couldn't even walk. One year later, so in 2024, so this year, They came back and they did it again. And now this robot can walk perfectly fine. It can fold laundry. It can crack an egg. It can sort things out. Like it is doing things flawlessly in one year. If they could fix that within one year. Okay, hold on. I got to put that away. 
Mrs. As soon as I'm done, I will give this back to you, but you're being very noisy right now. I'm so sorry. What was I saying? Yes, robots are going to take over the world. <laughs> they can create this robot that can freaking do tasks so flawlessly now. So it's like, what are they going to do within another year? What are they going to do within another five years, 10 years, 20 years? Like, come on. That is what's the scary thing. And they were talking about like certain jobs are just going to be completely non-existent because of this AI and these robots that they're going to be able to make. Because if you think about it, if they can fold laundry or do like mundane tasks that have like repetition, I can guarantee one of the first jobs that are going to be non-existent is fast food places. Because that's just the same method of making food and just serving it out to people. And I'm sure there's going to be some type of program that, like, if they're getting low on food, the computer's just going to automatically reorder it. Like, it's going to be not even a job anymore. It's literally going to be robots making all of our food, which is so scary to think. And I think what scares me the most is because I remember watching iRobot when I was a kid. Have you watched iRobot before? If you have watched iRobot, leave a comment down below. I love that movie. Like that actually might be my favorite movie. As scary as that is to admit. <laughs> because if we are now going into a world, or a time I should say, that is going to be so AI and so robot dependent. I, this sounds crazy, but it's just a matter of time before they take over. Like, I'm not even saying that as a joke. Like, it's just a matter of time. If they can think of by themselves, if they are starting to have fucking emotions, like, it's going to happen. And that's why I would almost rather be like, hey, like, I would rather pay a fucking human to make my food or to do all these tasks than to have a robot do that. Because once it keeps going, it's like, where do you stop? Where do you draw the line? And the thing is, you don't know where to draw the line until it goes too far. But if you've already gone too far, is it going to be too late? You're not just going to be able to be like, Whew, oh shit, okay, this is kind of turning bad. It's not going to be as easy to just like turn it around and be like, oh, this is where we stop having robots do stuff or this is where we stop AI from being able to do things like it's going to keep it's going to end up moving too far but I just hope that's my imagination <laughs> taking things way too far and blowing it out of proportion but it's crazy to think that this is the reality that we live in right now what's going to come of it I don't know and another crazy point that they made is we are going through another, what they call, um, or we're going through another revolution. Maybe that's the proper word. I, I'm not uh, obviously a pro in this category. I'm just like repeating shit that I heard. <laughs> but we're in like another revolution right now. Like the first one was technology was invented. So like machines, manufacturing, stuff like that. And then the other revolution was the internet was created. And now we're in the revolution where AI is being made. So now this intelligence is artificial. So this is just the starting point of it, which is crazy because if you think of where the starting point of just the internet started, and how much that unleashed is a fuck ton. So if we're now just on the brink where this is where AI is released, and this is just what it's doing in the beginning, like we are in just the beginning phases. Like if we zoom out and think about everything that the internet did in the beginning, if the graph is this big, the beginning was just right here. So we're in the exact same thing, but with the AI phase. In the future, it's going to be so much. But right now, we're just right here. So 
I'm going to move off this topic because I could literally talk about this forever. It's really a mind-blowing thing because, like I keep saying, I don't know where the frick this AI is going to end up. But speaking of AI, (laughs) or I guess not using AI, um, my recipe book. So I, that was another thing that they were talking about at this coaching conference was making your own book. And I'm like, this is actually perfect timing because I already have my whole recipe book created. So like all the recipes are in there. I have uh, several pages talking about nutrition, just kind of like learning how to apply the recipes because I feel like that was a huge missing part of all of these healthy cooking and all these easy recipe books is that people don't really know how to apply it. Like I can give you a list of healthy meals, but if you don't know how to apply those healthy meals to actually meet your goals, you're not really going to get anywhere. So that's why when I made my recipe book, I was like, okay, in the beginning pages, I want to actually talk about how to apply these recipes. So how do you know what macronutrients you should be eating? How do you know to read a nutrition label? Um, How to, you know, make little tweaks so it's lower calorie, but you're not compromising the flavor how to track macros, you know, just like information like that that is actually useful. So that way you can apply these recipes that I'm showing you later on in the book. So it's not just a recipe book, like it is a full on nutrition guide for you. But like I was saying, this was perfect timing because I already had all of this book written up. And so now it's going through the final processes of like editing and then I need to (laughs) learn how to format it because that was one thing that I didn't even know about because I thought I already have it all like made out and I thought I just sent it off to the company and they just print it. But I guess the formatting is different between the types of books that you're making. So like if you're making a a hardback, if you're making a paperback, if you're making an ebook, all of those, I guess, are technically different like sizes and formatting. So that is an extra step that I'm gonna have to take. Um, So I'm gonna learn how to do that. Otherwise, I'm excited because sometime next week I should be taking the photo for the title. I was trying to wait until I was a little bit further into prep so I looked a little bit leaner (laughs) because I'm obviously going to be on the title and I want to make sure I look my best so I think that I'm in a good spot now that next week we'll be taking the cover photo for it and then once I have that cover photo like I said it's just the formatting of the book and then submitting it making sure it goes through reviews and then it's going to be published for you guys to get so it's coming so, so close. And I feel like out of all of the projects that I've done, this is one project that I am so proud that I have created. Because one, you can see it in like a tangible form, but I feel like it's going to be able to reach so many people. Because I mean, there is a limit on how many people I can actually take on for coaching versus if I can go with this recipe book, I can reach and impact so much more people at one time. And this is something that you can use right away. And I think this is beneficial for people that um, are happy with their body and like happy where they're at and they just want new ideas. They just want to have a change up. Maybe they're um, happy with where they're at, but they have the type of diet where everything is just like super plain and they're just afraid to try something else because they don't know if it's going to work versus this recipe book is going to be able to open them up to being able to have a more fun diet while while still focusing on that healthy side of things. So I'm just very excited about it. What are you doing, Char? I can see her in the viewfinder, and I feel like she's just been standing there (laughs) for a really long time. 
Are you good? Where'd your toy go? She ended up getting a toy too, but I don't see it. Anywho, this weekend we might be taking a small trip somewhere. Like I said, this is going to be the last weekend that Jacob's dad is with us. So we wanted to do something fun and special. And when we first moved down to Florida, I feel like we were exploring quite a bit. But now that we've gotten a little bit more content and aware of our, we're not aware, more like settled in to our surroundings, we've haven't been like traveling out and exploring as much so I feel like now is a perfect opportunity to do so so we're doing some research we're gonna see if we can take a day trip somewhere I really enjoyed when we went to Tarpon Springs last year which they call it like the little Greek of Florida and it's crazy because when you do go there there is so much Greek culture that you actually feel like you are in a totally different country and I love Greek food. The baklava, um, tzatziki, pita bread, the like shaved lamb chops. Like I <laughs> love that stuff. I don't know if I want to specifically go there just because I am on prep and I'm not going to be able to enjoy those foods. So I would rather save that trip for a time when I can actually enjoy some of those things. Um, so we've been looking around at places that are good snorkeling because that's one thing that Jacob's dad said that he wants to do. And we always are down for a good snorkeling trip. Um, so we're kind of doing some more research on that, figuring out where we want to go. Like I was saying earlier, if we are going to be going in the water, especially like the ocean, we're probably going to go on the west side because it's just so much calmer. Every time we go to the east side, so like New Smyrna, Coco, or Daytona, it's good for surfing because there's a lot of waves, but snorkeling, like you're not going to see anything. You would just be sitting there getting like pummeled the whole time. It's not fun. So I'll keep you guys updated on what we decide to do this weekend. Otherwise, within like three weeks at this point, is it really three weeks away? Hold on. Let me pull up my calendar. One, two, three. Three weeks in three days. Oh, it's on a Friday. I'm talking about my birthday, by the way. <laughs> my birthday this month or this year is on a Friday, so that's awesome. I, it hasn't been on a Friday in a really long time. I feel like it's always been on like a Monday or Tuesday. So it's May 3rd, we we're gonna figure out what we wanna do for that. We've been wanting to go down to Miami for a really long time, especially because the Brightline train now opened up. So the Brightline train, they have super cheap tickets from Orlando directly to Miami. So you can get like a section for like 60 to 80 bucks. And that's like total. So if you have four people, you split it between them. That's like peanuts, super cheap. So we can maybe do like a couple days there. Again, that kind of goes into the same thing of like, I'm going to be on prep. And when we're in Miami, I feel like the experience of Miami is like the parties and having fun and eating and all of that. I feel like there was something that I ended up seeing recently that I wanted to do. Oh, so in Orlando, they just opened up what they call a surf park. So it, it basically makes like artificial waves for you to surf on and I would love to do that because <laughs> I still suck at surfing now needless to say we've only been doing it for it's been less than a year because we got it last I think we got it towards like the tail end of last summer and surfing is a sport, I guess you can call it, that you need a lot of practice with. Like it's not something that you're just going to be able to pick up right away. And so I'm giving myself grace. It's fine that I still suck at it. Have I stood up on a board yet? 
Uh, technically, yes. <laughs> have I s stayed standing on that board? Technically, no. <laughs> So that's kind of why I wanted to go to this surf park because I feel like they create like the perfect way for you. And I think it would be a lot easier for me to practice on. So that's kind of on my bucket list to do. Cause I would love to use that as like an introduction to surfing. Cause there's only been one time and that was when we went to Cocoa Beach. They had the perfect waves and I don't think it was because it was that area like the everything just happened to end up being in the right time in like place meaning like the weather was right the temperature was right the wind was right like everything just happened to be good because when you're surfing what makes a big difference is the tide and the wind and I feel like a lot of times when we go out to surf, the tide and wind is just not quite perfect. Like if you're an experienced surfer, it's totally fine. You can go out and you can still catch some waves. But like when you are learning and you want literally the perfect waves, like the stars have to align. <laughs> just that one time when we went to Cocoa Beach, the stars aligned. And we just haven't had an experience like that again. But that was actually the time when Jacob got stung by a fuck ton of jellyfish. I remember um, paddling out to this wave and I kind of see this thing float by and I was like, oh, that's really weird. It looks like a, like a grocery bag. And I kept kind of seeing them every once in a while. I'm like, oh snap, those are jellyfish. And they weren't close enough to me so I like wasn't concerned. But Jacob was like several yards down and he was just getting stung left and right. And it's not like he was getting stung on purpose because he was staying in one place. Like he was surfing and so it was pushing him in. And when he fell off and when he was getting pushed in, these jellyfish just kept like sticking to him and stinging. And I felt so bad. And I have... Uh, YouTube short and I'm pretty sure I put it up on a reel on Instagram of this and I took a video of all of the jellyfish stings that he got and there was at least like five good stings on his body and he said it stung like hell and we ended up going to the lifeguard stand and I'm thinking like all I know from being a uh, midwestern and like from what I've heard is like you have to pee on him and I'm like I'm not fucking whooping out my vajayjay right Okay. I ended up needing to delete some footage off of my camera because I didn't have enough space. But I was in the middle of my story talking about Jacob's jellyfish things. I don't know where exactly I got cut off, but I was basically saying I'm not going to whip out my hoo-ha in the middle of this beach and pee on him because of the jellyfish stings. So I'm like, let's go talk to this lifeguard first, see what he says, and we will go from there. And it turns out that vinegar is just as good as pee. Probably a little bit better because that's gross having someone pee on you. So they poured some vinegar on him. It like subsided it for a little bit. Still didn't help 100%. But yeah, so we'll see if we end up going to that surf park. But that's on my possible bucket list for my birthday. Otherwise, that's everything from what's going on in my life right now and everything that's coming up. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you have any topics that you want me to talk about, leave them in the comment below. I'm more than happy to chit chat about it. But make sure you subscribe and give this video a like. Otherwise, I'll chat with you guys later. Bye. Okay, Wings, there you go. There's your toy back. Listen to me as I.